All right, friends, we are going to read the final two chapters of Junie B. I can't wait to see what happens when the secret Santa gift exchange happens. All right, chapter 10, Pressure Friday. Dear First Grade Journal, I keep thinking about May's present. I wonder what will happen when she sees the coal. I wonder what her face will look like. I wonder if she will learn a lesson. I wonder if Santa will be proud of me. That is all the things I am wondering. Your friend, Junie B, first grader. Just then I felt a poke. It was May. Are you getting excited, Junie Jones? I'm getting excited, she said. Lenny heard her. Me too, he said. I'm getting excited too. Herb and Jose both nodded their heads. Me too, they said together. May squirmed and bounced around in her seat. She was acting like a regular kid. Having a secret Santa makes you feel like you have a best friend, she said, very giggling. Right, Lenny? Right? Huh? It makes you feel like you have a best friend, doesn't it? Lenny looked funny at her. I do have a best friend, May, he said. My best friend is Jose. Jose smiled out. Back at you, Lynn, he said. Her pointed at me. And my best friend is Junie B, he said. I poked him very fun. And my bestest friend is Y-O-U, Herbert. Just then, May stopped bouncing and squirming, and her face slots all its happy. Oh, she said real soft. Right. Her shoulders slumped a bit. Well, anyway, that's what it makes me feel like. She said, having a secret Santa makes me feel like I have a best friend too. After that, all of us just sat there very still. My mood didn't feel happy anymore. Very slow, Lenny and Jose turned back around in their chairs. Me and Herb turned around too. We didn't talk again. We just sat there and waited for Mr. Scary to call our names. Finally, he called Jose and then Lenny. May started to get excited again. I heard her whispering to herself, it's almost my turn, it's almost my turn, it's almost my turn. Just then Lenny came back from the gift table and May sprang up. Me, me, it's time for me, she hollered. Then she grabbed her gift bag and she ran right back to Mr. Scary. Pretty soon it would be my turn too. I picked up my gift shop bag and I peeked at the coal. My stomach felt a little bit sickish at the sight of it. I wonder if Santa's stomach feels sickish before he gives children coal. May skipped back to her chair and she started singing Frosty the Snowman. I closed my ears. I tried not to hear her being happy. Finally, Mr. Scary called my name. Junie B, he said. My heart pounded real hard. I picked up my gift bag and walked back to the table. Mr. Scary winked at me. Do you need any help, he asked. I shook my head real fast. No, I said, no help, no thank you. No help, Mr. Scary, I can do this all by myself. My hands felt sweatish and clamish and I wiped them on my skirt. Then I waited very patient for my teacher to walk away. After he was gone, I picked up May's gift sack and I held it in my hand. It was the beautifulest sack on the table. It was covered with shiny gold stars and sparkly red glitter. Plus also there were beautiful green bows all over the sides. I did a gulp. I wondered how it would look with the black coal inside it. I wondered if May would be sad when she saw it. I did another gulp. I wondered if she would stop singing Frosty. Just then I heard my name again. Junie B, said Mr. Scary. Are you sure you don't need any help back there? Then, oh no, oh no. Before I could even answer, I heard his feet. He was coming back to help me. I felt pressure in my head. There was no time left, and so boom, I did it. I grabbed May's present out of my gift bag, and I dropped it right in her sack. Then I hurried back to my desk, speeding fast, and I plopped down in my seat. I took some deep breaths. That was over, and that was that. The end. Chapter 11, May's Big Surprise. Room one went to lunch. I did not eat my sandwich. I also did not eat my carrot sticks, because how can I even swallow stuff when my stomach feels all sickish? I kept thinking and thinking about what I did, only it didn't even matter anymore, because now it was too late. 
After we got back from lunch, Mr. Scary put on a Santa hat and he passed out cake and cookies and punch. Plus also he gave everyone a candy cane. After that, he went back to our gift sacks and he folded their tops shut. Okay, everyone, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Ready for me to deliver the secret Santa gifts, he said. Ready, hollered room one. Mr. Scary smiled. When I give you your gift sack, please keep it on your desk, he said. Then when everyone has their sack, we will open them all together. May jumped up and clapped. That is a deal, mister, she said real silly. Then she sat back down and she sang Frosty some more. And all room one started singing with her, except not me, because I still did not feel cheery about what I did. And there was nothing I could even do about it. Pretty soon, Mr. Scary handed May her sack. She stood up and skipped around her desk again. She was still belting out Frosty. I drummed my fingers on the desk. Okay, now her joy is actually getting on my nerves, I said to just myself. Finally, Mr. Scary gave me my gift sack too. Thank you, I said. Only I actually didn't feel that happy because May's gift kept staying on my mind. As soon as all the sacks were passed out, Mr. Scary walked to the front of the room and he beamed real big. Okay, everyone, when I count to three, we'll open our gifts. Ready, he said. Ready, we shouted. Mr. Scary started to count. One, two, three. Then whoosh, all the children pulled out their gifts at once. Except not me, again and not May. Instead, she just stared into her sack and she sat there real frozen. Her face had shock on it. Lenny turned around to see what she got, but May didn't move. What'd you get, May? He asked. What's wrong, huh? What's wrong? May didn't answer. Then Jose turned around too, and so did Herb and Sheldon and Shirley. What's wrong with May, they said. Is something wrong with May? May kept staying frozen. Finally, Mr. Scary came back to her desk and he bent down next to her. May, is there a problem? He asked real quiet. May did a big swallow. Her eyes had a little bit of tears in them, I think. Then very slow, she handed him the gift sack and he looked inside. His mouth dropped open at that sight. Oh, he said, oh my. He gave it back. May looked up at him. I can't believe anybody would do this, she said real soft. Do what, May? asked Sheldon. <sighs> May breathed real deep. Then she reached into her bag and she pulled out her gift. <gasps> Everyone gasped real loud. They could not believe their eyeballs, I tell you. They waited to get their breath back. Then everybody started shouting all at once. The squeeze a burp, the squeeze a burp. Someone got made the squeeze a burp. That thing costs a fortune, called Shirley. Squeeze it, yelled Sheldon. Yes, squeeze it, yelled the children. May started to grin. Then she stood up kind of slow and she gave that thing a squeeze and ha, it burped beautifully. Room one locked their heads off. Do it again, do it again, do it again, they shouted. And so May burped again, and room one laughed again, and they kept going on and on like that. Finally, May sat down for a second, and she fanned herself with her hand. I think I'm being popular, she said, very stunned. Then she quick stood up again, and she skipped around the room, and she kept on squeezing her burp. It felt happy to watch her, sort of. Also, it felt hard because I really, really wanted that toy. That's why I wanted it bad. Only I didn't even belong to me now, and it never, ever would. My gift sack was still sitting on my desk. I put it on my lap, and I looked inside. Crayons? I said, very surprised. My secret Santa bought me new crayons? Who even knew that I needed these things? All of room one turned around at once. Everyone, they said. I opened the box and breathed their new crown smell. Then I lined them up on my desk and I smiled real happy because Greeny was not a stubby and my red's head was perfectly pointy. I smiled even bigger. Then I drank a 
some punch, and ate a cookie. My stomach felt better now. Pretty soon, May skipped back to her desk and she fanned herself again. Phew, being popular really gets you tired, she said. Right, Junie Jones, right? I looked back and nodded. Right, I said, kind of quiet. After that, May sat down and both of us ate our cake and we licked our candy canes. It was very peaceful for us. We were having goodwill, I believe. After May finished, she wiped off her mouth with a napkin. Well, I'd better go back to my skipping now. I have a lot more burping to do before the bell rings. She jumped up from her chair, but instead of skipping away, she just stood there with a the squeeze of burp and she smiled at me. Then all of a sudden, she reached across the aisle and she put it on my desk. Want to try it, Jeannie Jones? She said. Want to do a burp? My eyes, eyebrows raised very shocked. Really, May? No kidding? Would you really, really let me do that? Then before she could change her mind, I quick picked it up and I squeezed that thing as loud as I could and wow, we wow, wow, it was the biggest burp of the day. May clapped and clapped. <laughs> that was a good one, Ginny B. You did good. The words floated inside my head. I smiled. I did good. After that, May picked up her toy and she started to skip away then Whoa, hold the phone. It hit me like a brick. I jumped up and I grabbed May's arm. Wait a second, May. Did you just say my B? Because I really, really thought you just said my B just now. I'm almost positive you did, in fact. May tapped her chin. Hmm. Really? She asked. I said your B? That's funny. Then she did a little smile and she skipped away. I sat there for a second. Then my whole face got happy, only I don't even know why. Because I still really wanted that squeeze of burp, I tell you. And so how come I felt so good inside? Maybe when I got home from school, Philip Johnny Bob would help me out. But for now, there was only one thing I was really, really hoping for. I picked up my new black crayon and I opened my journal. Dear Santa, I really hope that you are watching me just now. That's all I hope. Love. Junie B. Giver. P.S. You don't happen to have an extra squeeze-a-burp up there, do you? Peace and goodwill. Amen.